Hello and welcome to this OpenTX Quick Tip. This Quick Tip is all around failsafe, the different options, how you set them and how I use them. Now I've had this question a couple of times over the past few weeks so I thought you know what I'll do a video specifically on this. It is covered already in lots of different places on the channel so if you're new to OpenTX or trying to figure stuff out I'd heartily recommend go and check out the OpenTX Mix School or things like the Tyrannus series of videos all things like my simple and complex plane setup videos where I go through how you do all this and where you'd use the different types of failsafe. But if you're just interested in failsafe, then stay with me here and I'll go through it and explain all the differences. Now, rather than use the radio, I'm going to use companion because we can simulate the radio and I can just kind of show you all the button presses. So we're going to assume that we were using a Tyrannus. So let me just simulate it. There's my virtual Tyrannus. All the buttons work in exactly the same way as a regular Tyrannus. So it's a great way to me to show you uh, and actually have it on the screen. So if we press the menu button for the particular model that we're on and click page, then we come into the area where we can set things like the model name and all of that goodness. Now, if we go down to the very bottom or we can roll around and go up the top, here are all the fail safe modes. Now we have not set. Uh, which is the default position, which is probably not great, but it will, when you turn the radio on, will always give you that warning, say fail safe isn't set. This is where you set it. And then if we press enter, so it's flashing, we have another couple of options. The first one is hold. And if the radio loses connection with the receiver uh, for however long, then the receiver kind of just stays outputting the same channel values. So if you're flying a plane, it can be quite dangerous because if you have the throttle on 50% and you're flying straight and level and you lose the radio, then unfortunately the plane is going to continue to fly uh, with the throttle at 50% and all the controls set for level flight and it'll fly right out of your life. So hold is really quite dangerous. Um, but what it means is that if there are intermittent breaks in the connection with your plane, uh, and, and I would only really recommend using this or consider using this with a fixed wing, but only in very exceptional circumstances, uh, the plane doesn't immediately go into fail safe. The next one then is the custom where you can actually set the individual ranges. Uh, I use this one an awful lot for planes in particular. Or if I'm using something like a, um, a flight controller in a fixed wing model. Now, this allows you to set each of the individual channels what they will go to if there is a break between the radio and the receiver. Now, why is that interesting? Well, it might be that using something like iNav or Ardu plane in a fixed wing. And what you want to happen is in the event of a break, you want the mode channel to go to return to home. That would be where you'd set it in here. So say for example, uh, let's go to set. So we'll hit enter for that. We'll go along and we'll select set. And you can see here that what is being shown with all these dotted lines is the actual channel positions as I move them around. Now it might be that for channel five, that might be my mode channel. So I'll go down, select channel five, hit enter, and then press the plus key and keep pressing it until it goes to 100%. And I would just set that in my flight controller to be returned to home or whatever it is I wanted. There is also a kind of a cool thing on this where if we go and say, for example, we want the throttle to be off which is a handy thing to have in a fail safe. So throttle is channel three. If I press and hold enter, then it allows you to select individual hold on that particular channel. So that might be the flight mode that you really might want to do that or none. Or if you just have it on the, um, the number, if you start doing the number and then press and hold enter, it'll just immediately jump to the value that you've got the stick at for that particular channel. So that's how you set custom. Now custom is what I would recommend doing if you are using a fixed wing craft. Set it so that the model uh, will probably turn off the motor and uh, set all the controls to a neutral position so that it doesn't do anything wacky while it waits to reacquire the radio. If you're using something like a flight controller in a fixed wing, then I would absolutely set it so that it uh, is set to something like return to home so the model will fly back towards you and hopefully you'll reacquire the signal.
Now there is a couple of other options as well. If I just do the next one, uh, we've done holes, we've done custom, let's do no pulses. Now no pulses is one of those that I would only use if I've got an S bus connection to something like a flight controller. Now the really cool thing about S bus is that if you're using S bus rather than a PWM connection to servos and things in a plane, the way that the information is sent from the receiver to the flight controller has a number of additional flags around the data about the channel values that tell it whether or not there's been a frame missed, i.e. there's been a slight dodgy connection or whether or not you're in a fail safe mode. So irrespective of how you set the things on something like a Tron's radio, the receiver will know that uh, there's a fail safe and will tell the flight controller. Things like Betafly, iNavfly, Arduplane, the vector system, uh, the co-pilot, all those kind of things that are out there at the moment will be watching that fail safe flag. And as soon as it sees that fail safe flag, in the data that's coming across the SBUS line, it will enact whatever you've set for failsafe. Now that's handy uh, for lots of different reasons, but I would normally use no pulses when I am using something like a multi-rotor. Uh, that just guarantees that the multi-rotor is absolutely going to spot when there is a problem with the connection. Now in theory, if you're using SBUS, that shouldn't be a problem. The last one is receiver. Receiver is a bit of a weird one. Uh, the failsafe on the transmitter will depend on how the failsafe is setting on the receiver. In all of my years with the Tyrannus and OpenTX system, I've never ever used that one. So to very quickly recap, what I would do is I would never use hold personally. I think it's a dangerous system. Lots of flyaways could happen with hold. If you're using a fixed wing model that has a, doesn't have a flight controller in it, then I would use custom. I would go along, I'd set it typically for throttle off. If, however, it has something like a stabilizer or a return to home flight controller or something like that, I'd also set it there as well. Again, if you're using a flight controller in a plane with SBUS, then you can rely on those SBUS flags kind of triggering everything as well. Is no pulses. I would use that if there's a flight controller. Again, you could use that in a plane with a flight controller because the flight controller will immediately see that there is a problem. And if you've set return to home as the fail safe option inside the flight controller software, that will be activated as well. And that's why I tend to do it on a plane. Uh, I tend to use custom because if there is a disconnection between the radio and the receiver, it'll trigger a return to home because that's the way I've set channel five, the mode channel to be or if there is a break between the cable between the receiver and the flight controller, the flight controller then will initiate the return to home because it will lose the receiver signal. And that's the safest way. It gives you protection in two places. And then we have no pulses, which is what I tend to use in quadcopters. I tend to use things like with Betaflight and iNav, I'll use a no pulse setup. Uh, again, because you were using SBUS, the flight controller will spot that straight away. Um, and then the receiver one is one I'm not used. So hopefully that helps explain it. And hopefully for those of you that weren't sure how that all worked, that helps explain it a little bit more. Again, if you're not sure about how all this works, go and check out the OpenTX Mix School, the plane setup videos, beta flight bind and fly setup videos. I'll put links down in the description. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.